I came to very soon. Curse it, spite that ever I was born to set it. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? This is the excellent foppery of the world. Surely because of this profound understanding of human nature, but a profound inquiry about the whole spectrum of experience that means that you can find your life at any point on that spectrum if you come to it at different stages. You know, it's the audacity of it, the, 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 how graphic these things are. There's a scene in Much Ado About Nothing in the second half, the worst wedding in the world, you know, where Hero is rejected by Claudio at the altar. And then her father, Leonardo, and Claudio have a discussion at the altar in front of the entire congregation and the priest about whether he has taken her virginity before marriage and that that might be okay and permissible um, and we can all sort of move on. They have a discussion about whether this young nobleman his daughter in front of every single person at the altar where they're meant to be married. And the, 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 the intense ability to, to confront every single nuance of what might be psychologically possible at that moment and unendurably awful for everybody and not look away from it for a second, encompassing everything that a father might feel in order to save his daughter's marriage and th that he might make everybody be witness to. You know, I think if you were to transpose it into a modern idiom and saw that scene portrayed anywhere in the world, downtown, any off-Broadway, any sort of little pub theatre in London, it would still be <laughs> so intensely shocking and disturbing and true about the possibilities of human behavior. And he also understood that people don't really change just because they get married. And actually to be in love, to be transformatively in love is to be a sort of, is to be in danger of being a stranger to yourself too in some way, you know, is, is not a comfortable state to be in. It's, it's, it can be wildly disorienting to everything you, you knew to be secure and true, you know. But he also knew that, um, to be, to, to be, to suddenly be aware that the person you thought hated you most in the world, that you uh, sort of oddly can't quite get out of your mind, is, is in fact secretly burning with love for you, is the most oddly ennobling thing. The loneliness of their intelligence, of their independent intelligence in that play, Beatrice and Benedict, is so, is so, is so moving to me in the, in the first part, you know, for all their grandstanding. They're so alone, you know, they're, so, they're such lonely souls. And then to realize that actually this is other person who has this secret adoration for you, masked in this, in this antipathy, is, is just this water in the desert, you know, for both of them. And I think there's something so profound about that, about our feelings, you know. It's not, there's no moral judgment about it, it's just a chemical thing that happens to your body and your mind and your heart, you know, it just changes you. You want to prove you love me? Let's just suddenly make this Macbeth. Go kill him. Kill him. Don't come back till you've killed him, and then I'll know that you love me. Out of the sunny, famous romantic comedy, <laughs> I would eat his heart in the marketplace. I would eat his heart in the marketplace? in the marketplace, you know, not at home. I wouldn't just have this, you know, behind closed doors. I would go out and I would to the most populous place and eat his heart. I mean, you know, he's not around.